Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. In today's video we'll talk about all the strange things happening to the North Star Polaris. So without much delay, let's get started. For ages, people have paid close attention to the North Star. Polaris is another name for this bright star. It is placed almost exactly above the North Pole of the Earth and can be used as a landmark in the sky by travelers who don't have a compass. It is also the cephite that is closest to Earth. A cephite is a type of star whose width and brightness change all the time. Polaris is also part of a binary system. It has a sister star, Polaris B, that is not as bright but can still be seen going around the sun from Earth. A lot of writers who have written about this famous person have said, as we learn more, it is becoming clear that we understand less. Astronomers have made models to explain how stars should act, but this star keeps breaking those rules. The problem with Polaris is that no one agrees on how big it is or how far away it is from Earth. Several different techniques can be used by scientists to figure out the mass, age, and distance of a star like Polaris. Astronomer Hilding R. Nielsen, who works at the University of Toronto and is one of the authors of the new study, says that a stellar evolution model is one way to do this. Researchers can look at the star's brightness, color, and rate of pulsation. The information they get from these studies can be used to figure out the star's size and brightness, as well as what part of its life cycle it is in. Nielsen told Live Science that with those details, it's not hard to figure out how far away the star it is. It's just a matter of simple maths once you know how bright the star it is and how dim it looks from Earth. When used with cephites, these models work especially well because the rate at which cephites pulse is directly related to their luminosity, which is another word for light. This makes it easy to figure out how far away any of these stars are. Because astronomers are so sure they understand that connection, cephites have become the most important tools for measuring distances across the whole universe. There are, however, other ways to look at Polaris that don't fit with the ideas of how stars evolve. Polaris is what we call an astrometric binary, Nielsen said, which means you can actually see its companion going around it, sort of like a circle being drawn around Polaris and that takes about 26 years. The researchers have not yet fully observed a full circuit by Polaris B. The companion star has been seen in enough detail over the past few years, though that they have a pretty good idea of what the path looks like. Nelson says that if you know this, you can use Newton's laws of gravity to figure out how heavy the two stars are. The new parallax measurements from the Hubble Space Telescope, which are another way to figure out how far away a star is, along with what was already known, led to very exact numbers about Polaris's mass and distance. From those findings, we can say that it is about 3.45 times the mass of the Sun, with an error of 0.75 solar masses. This number is much lower than the mass that comes from models of how stars evolve, which point to a value of about 7 times the mass of the Sun. There are a lot of strange things about this star system. It has been worked out how old Polaris B is, and the answer is that it is a lot older than its bigger brother. For a binary system, this doesn't happen very often. In general, the two famous people are about the same age. 19 Polaris models were created by Nielsen and Haley Blinn, a college student and researcher at the University of Toronto. They did this to see if those models could fit together all the information that was already known about the system. They were not able to. Based on what the researchers wrote, it's possible that at least one of the numbers is just wrong in this case. Nelson says that there are a lot of problems with studying Polaris. This object can't be seen through most binoculars because it is above the North Pole of the Earth. Furthermore, telescopes that are designed to look at stars that are much fainter and farther away are usually equipped with the tools needed to carefully measure the star's properties. Polaris is very bright for these kinds of instruments, so bright that it makes them go blind. Nielsen says that there is no good reason to doubt the data that the experts do have. After Nielsen and Blinn found these things, they came up with a third, stranger explanation. The main star of the Polaris system might have been made up of two stars that crashed into each other millions of years ago. Nielsen says that this kind of binary collision could bring new life to stars by attracting more matter and making it look like the stars essentially went through the fountain of youth. The Polaris disagreement might have something to do with the fact that stars made by binary collisions don't always fit stellar evolution models. The expert said, this is not likely to happen, but it's also not impossible. Not a single one of the answers has been perfect so far. It is challenging to draw significant conclusions beyond the fact that Polaris continues to be an enduring mystery, 
and the more we measure, the less we seem to understand, the researchers said. Aeronumers are interested in Polaris because it is a pulsating supergiant. These are the biggest and brightest stars. They are often hundreds of times bigger and much brighter than the Sun. However, Polaris doesn't look very bright to us because it's so far away. If you look closely, Polaris is actually three stars. The bigger of them is a spectroscopic binary with a period of about 30 years and a cepheid variable with a period of about four days. Its changes in brightness are too small to see with the human eye. The Polaris system looks like it has a magnitude of 2.00. It is about 447.6 light years away from Earth. Figuring out its distance is important for making other methods for figuring out cosmic lengths more accurate because it is the closest cepheid variable. Polaris has an unfair image for dependability. As you can see, all the stars in the northern hemisphere seem to circle Polaris because the Earth's axis of spin is close to it. In his famous quote from Julius Caesar, but I am as constant as the northern star, Shakespeare uses this star to show that he is not referring to the sun. Polaris is a cepheid variable, which means it is a big star that is getting close to the end of its life and whose light changes as it shrinks and grows. In the 1900s, studies of Polaris showed two interesting patterns. The star's changes became less noticeable over time, and it got at least 15% brighter overall. Queen's University and Kingston astronomers found that Polaris has a very strong magnetic field. Charged particles in the atmospheres of stars are affected by their magnetic fields, which change and grow over time. Stars' winds, internal structure, and spinning speed can all be changed by magnetic fields. Polaris is a classical cephi, which is a basic type of pulsating star that helps scientists figure out how far away other galaxies are and study how the universe is expanding. It's hard to find magnetic fields in cephites, so not much is known about how they affect behavior and development. Researchers can help solve the secrets of the universe by figuring out Polaris' magnetic field. Polaris has always been an important star for astronomical navigation, and in many cultures, its fixed position in the sky has been seen as a sign of stability and reliability. Every four days, Polaris pulses, which causes its size, color, and brightness to change. As the closest and brightest cephide, Polaris should be used as a standard for figuring out how far away things are in the universe. But Polaris pulsing has changed in ways that scientists haven't been able to fully explain over many years. These changes may have something to do with the star's magnetic properties. Astronomers are very interested in this star and will keep on trying their best to find out more and more about it. That's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like and comment down your thoughts on this and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.